Hello and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, I'm Mart, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. This is going to be the last video from myself for a couple of days as I'm away um, just for the weekend. But today we're going to kick things off with the reveal of DisplayPort 2.0. So, for those of you in the know, the last update we saw, the spec update I mean to say, for DisplayPort was 1.4a which was back in 2016 and that offered up to 25.9 Gbps bandwidth. And now we have seen an official unveiling of DisplayPort 2.0 and we see a significant jump to 77.4 Gbps which is quite the hike I'm sure you'll agree. So I'm sure some of you are going, okay, that's, that sounds great, that sounds interesting, but what does that actually mean in terms of you know real world things that affect you, the end user? Well, DisplayPort 2.0 will be the first standard that can support 8K at a 60 hertz refresh rate without compression, along with 30 bits per pixel for HDR10 support. And if you've got display stream compression, it can even power two 8K 120Hz displays. So, obviously, there's not many that are going to be able to take advantage of this uh, capability for quite some time, but it is there. That, that support is there. So... We've got a few different setups that you can have thanks to DisplayPort 2.0. Again, you've got the 116K display at 60Hz and 30BPP, and that's with HDR, and 110K at 60Hz with 24BPP, that's with no compression, and then you can have two 8K displays at 120Hz and 30BPP with, with the compression, and then two 4K uh, displays at 144Hz and 24BPP with no compression, and you can even go up to three 10K displays at 60Hz and 30BPP with the compression, and then three 4K displays at 90Hz with 30BPP, again with that no compression. For those of you wondering, yes, it is going to be backwards compatible with previous versions. So the final question you might have in your mind is, okay, when are we actually going to be seeing products have this on the market? And it is going to be on the market by late 2020. Of course, as I've already said, it's going to be a while before we see the technology to really fully utilise this, but it is still cool, and obviously it is quite flexible. You can have, you know, dual 4K screens, as I said, or you can have 8K if you really want. It's not just for 8K or 16K or whatever. You can kind of play around with it a bit and have a bit more freedom than you might otherwise have with the current standard. So, some pretty cool news, I will say. So let's move on to some news regarding the AMD 5000 series. So, we have a pretty significant amount of graphics card SKUs that have been registered by Sapphire with the Eurasian Economic Commission by Sapphire. So, before I go any further, I just want to say that these are just registrations of names. There is nothing to even suggest, even slightly, that these are anything more than placeholders. So, obviously, at the moment, all we know about for certain is the XT and 5700 vanilla. So 19 other SKUs is obviously a bit of a, whoa, where has all those SKUs come from? Now I have no doubt that we are going to be seeing more SKUs in this particular lineup, but 19 more? Probably not. So this is just Safa registering these names and just placeholders, as I already said. They've even got a RX 5950XT, which would be a ultra high-end card. Now, it's entirely possible that some of these names are correct. I'm fully expecting to see some lower-end cards. You know, one of the things that AMD has really been harping on about with RDNA is its flexibility as an architecture. So it's going to be replacing Polaris. And to be honest, it's, it's time. Polaris is obviously aging. And we have several SKUs being registered. So some of these seem quite plausible, some of them not, and some of them are clearly just placeholders. So we have... The 5950XT, 5950, 5900, and 5900 XT, 5850 XT, and 5850, 5800 XT, and 5800, 5750 XT, and the vanilla 5650 XT, and the vanilla, of course, the 5700 XT, and 5600, the 5550 XT, and the 5550, 
and then we also see an RX 590 XT as well just to kind of break the mold there and we have a 5500 XT and of course just vanilla 5500 so the most obviously out of place one there is the 5090 XT maybe that's just a typo maybe they meant 5900 5600 5400 it's, it's, it's the possibilities are literally it could be anything because again we don't know if these are based on any inside information or just educated guesses or a mix of both we just don't know but regardless we are seeing sapphire have got plans at least to have several SKUs in the amd 5000 series lineup but that's not the only thing i have for you from amd today no we have a time spy leak for the 5700 xt next up so we've got quite a few screenshots here of these results thanks to WCCFTech.com and we can see that the XT does pretty damn nicely against the RTX 2070 which of course is the card that it is targeting and we see a total score of 8575 but what we're really interested in actually is the graphics score which is 8719. However, the information does not stop there. We do see some information about the actual card itself. And it lines up with the specs that we already know. So, in terms of the actual score, let's talk a little bit more in detail. As I said, the graphics score is 8719. The graphics test 1 got 59.63 FPS um, on average. And then the graphics test 2 got 48 frames a second on average. For those of you wondering what CPU this was being used with, you can see at the top of the benchmark that it was using an 8700K from Intel. But the main takeaway from this is what I've already said, that this is pretty much in line with the RTX 2070. Now, of course, this is just one benchmark, but it does show a bit of prompt, well, quite a bit of prompt, should I say, for the 570, sorry, 5700 series, should I say. So expect more benchmarks to come. This is but a teaser, but a taste. And it's promising. Oh, yes. And do I have yet more treats for you, my friends? Yes, I do. I've got yet another benchmark, and it's an AMD one as well. We've got one this time for the Ryzen 9 3900X. So, this is a Sysoft Sandra benchmark, and we do see a few different results here down the bottom. Uh, both, all of them on the same motherboard, a Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero. So we see for processor arithmetic a score of 416.43 and then we see for processor multimedia a score of 1274.07 and then for cryptography we see 21.47 GB uh, gigabytes a second should I say. But what about its competitor, the card, sorry, the, the chip that it's actually targeting which is going to be the 9900K. So let's compare those results, shall we? So again, we have process arithmetic, multimedia, and cryptography to worry about here. So for arithmetic, we see a score for the 9900K of 303.56, and then for multimedia, we saw a score of 882.22, and then for cryptography, we see a score of 14.67. So for those of you who are paying attention at home, you'll know that all those results are much higher on the 3900X. Again, this is just one benchmark, but it looks rather promising, I'm sure you'd agree. One last game AMD piece of news to finish our proceedings for this evening, as according to a report from WCCF Tech, Frank Azor, who is a co-founder, VP and general manager of Alienware, will be joining AMD as chief gaming officer as of July the 3rd even, is going to be leaving Dell and officially going to be joining AMD. And if we are going to be seeing this come true, we would see an announcement on that very same day. So these are not confirmed, this is just a report slash rumour from WCCF Tech, so as per normal, do take it with a pinch of salt. But it would be nice to see AMD gaining some talent. Obviously, Intel have been very aggressive about taking talent wherever they can find it from both AMD and NVIDIA's side, so it would be nice for them to be gaining some talent rather than losing it. Uh, but we'll have to see how true this rumour slash report ends up being. Regardless though, my friends, hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I know we've got Friday to get through yet, but I hope you guys have a good one. I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Your support is highly appreciated. Just know that the Patreon paste, post, paste, post, yes, will be up when I get home. 
so I probably expect it Monday evening, my time. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.